Hi, hello. Welcome to Devon Monks Works and Worlds. I am on the road. I am uh, going to do a Monday Monk on the road with you. Thank you so much for joining me here. So I think this will only be one Monday Monk, but if I get so much footage, which I can't imagine there's that much footage because I'm writing on the road and what am I going to show you pictures of me sitting here writing? <laughs> But anyways, I'm going to splice together a little show for you. You're going to come along with me and go to my own little personal writing retreat here in our RV. It was a good drive over. I am at Cape Lookout Campground and the Oregon Coast, which is uh, kind of between, um, what would it be, he uh, Beaver and Tillamook? <laughs> yes, it's kind of right in there. Uh, anyways, it was a great drive. I had... Um, rain and sprinkles and fog and cloudbursts and I'm here now and it's not raining too hard so I, I think I'll have some breaks in rain. I got the chance to get on the electric bike and try it out on the beach. I'm going to take you along with me if I can and uh, yeah I did have our little uh, handy dandy co-pilot cheddar to help me navigate the roads and, and make it here safely and uh, anyway so I will keep you up to date on how things are going. I am working on outlining two novels in this here book that I brought along that is all blank pages and hopefully by the time I'm out of here it will be mostly not blank pages. So stay tuned. Quick story. So I'm driving over. I'm in the rig. The rig's an old rig. She doesn't have anything fancy like Bluetooth or anything like that. She's got a CD player right and a radio. So I've got the radio on and I'm like looking for channels, looking for channels, because I'm going up over mountain ranges and I'm losing channels, right? And the rig is loud. If you've never driven inside of an RV, everything moves around. The cupboards move. I can hear, I can hear the hangers clattering in back there. I can, I can hear, you know, things shifting around, drawers opening and closing. I mean, not really, but yes, we do have one drawer that opens that we have to fix. But anyways, yes. So it's clattering. It's loud. She's, she's making her noises for her road trip, right? And so I'm like, I want to hear this music. I'm turning it up, turn up, turn up. Can't quite hear anything. So I'm, doing check the channels search the channels for me scan bring me music and so it scans and it stops on something i'm like oh oh this is interesting this this i don't know what it is this sounds like new music okay okay i need to hear what the kids are listening to nowadays maybe maybe this is the new solid groove that's going on and you know i can, i'm in the groove i'm in the groove i can listen to this new music so i'm listening i'm like is this rap? Is this synth wave? what what are we and i tune it up a little louder so i can really hear it really good and it's it's a Charmin commercial. I'm listening to a toilet paper commercial. Day two, it's morning. There's no rain. It's beautiful out there. The sun is golden in a very light blue sky. I am going to get down to the beach, but first I'm going to do some work. I got some done on the outlining last night, working on one novel. I remember I'm working on two novels here. This doesn't help much, but basically, got some done. We'll be working on more. Um, going to work on this one novel probably most of today, outlining, brainstorming, characters, um, what are the plots. This is actually a trilogy, so I'm kind of thinking out across three books for this one book. And um, then maybe I'll switch to another book tomorrow, the other book. I also have Wayward Devils with me that I can write if I'm tired of outlining and brainstorming and just want to get some words down, so I might do that too. Let's see, this morning there is a chainsaw outside. Somebody's cutting down a tree, which this is Oregon, that makes sense. And this park has some trees and shrubs that need tending, I'm sure, although it doesn't sound like it's in the park. I will take you, hopefully today, on a ride around to see the park and then maybe even down to the beach. We'll see how the weather is. And um, last night when I was going to sleep, there was a frog outside my window, which I loved. It was just like croaking away and I'm like, this is beautiful nighttime music. And then it rained. So it was a great night and I'm ready to have a great day. Writing, just writing, 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 adding more pages to the book, running out my pen, need a new pen. Still writing. It's night. It's night on the second day and, uh, or the first full day of writing. And, uh, I'm still writing. Got, uh, helmet hair cause got out on the old electric bike and did some electric biking was super fun. Went over to the day use park. Cool story. They have an EV charger over there. It's an electric vehicle charger. Very she, she, um, we'll go out there probably to the park again to take a look around. Got down on the beach, watched the sunset, had a good time, and mostly spent the day writing. Still writing. I thought I'd take a moment and take you on my e-bike tour here of half of the campground. I'm going to go through the loops here at the top that um, I think 
trailers and stuff can be parked there. I think there's actually electrical hookups, but I'm not 100% sure. As you can see, there weren't a lot of people in the park when I um, took this footage. I was on my bike. This is the um, second day there, and I just zipped around the park to take a look at what it looked like. What I like about this park, I think it's older because the actual pull-in spaces, the slips are smaller than some of the newer places, but the trees are gorgeous. Some of them are just huge, and um, I'll show you those as we go by. Uh, here to the left is the actual, well, there's one of the large trees, but here to the left is the park host, which was a little hard to find. See that blue sign? That's a tsunami evacuation zone sign to show you how to drive out of the park in case there's a tidal wave so fun times people here are some of the big old trees that i'm talking about these camping spaces in here are beautiful and i think these are uh with electrical hookup and water hookups and then we come right into the yurt space i thought for sure there would be just a lot of people in the yurts but um not a lot of them were were being were booked out so i'll show you this space in here I almost got my uh, camping spot here by the yurts, but I wasn't sure since I'd never been to the park before how close they were and if I was going to have a hard time or easy time backing into uh, a slip by myself. And honestly, I think I would have done just fine and then I could have camped under the trees. I will show you in the next clip that's coming up where I actually did end up camping. Um, I do like camping under the trees given the chance because it makes me feel like I'm more out in the middle of nowhere uh, but And sometimes camping across from yurts, you'll have lots of families, you know, uh, booking out multiple yurts. And I wanted to be in a relatively quiet spot in the park, so I did choose a different place than I usually do in parks like this. Anyway, these are uh, some more camping slips. Uh, we're back around the loop to the beginning where I came in, and then this is right at the start of the park. I'm going to show you the next loop, which is the D loop, which is where I camped. So here we go. This is the D loop. And if you look at that lovely vehicle on the left, that is our rat rig. That is our little traveling beauty. Um, I parked in that first spot there because I figured that there would be plenty of room to back into it with all that open spaces and not very many trees. And I was right, there was plenty of room. The only downside was that there was a giant mud puddle right in front of the door. So I had to go in and out of the cab for the first day because it had rained pretty hard overnight and it was pretty soggy out there. Um, you'll see that some of the spots are blocked off because it, it's really off season. So some of these uh, spaces aren't open. And here in the D loop, uh, some of these places are also meant just for tent camping, which is pretty cool. There's a restroom and shower to the left that we just passed. And um, again, th these are nice kind of secluded spots, a little damp and a few of them, <laughs> tsunami zone sign again. There's a traffic cone living its best life on the picnic table across that one camping space. But anyways, most of these were open and by the end of the weekend, people had come in and chosen some of these spots to camp at. And most of these uh, puddles were gone too, just like there's good drainage over there. It's mostly sand. So these were nice um, because they were sunnier spots. So I got a lot more sunshine being out here not under the trees which was nice in the cool weather and I was right at the beginning of the um, slip space so I got to see a lot of comings and goings it it wasn't quiet but it wasn't noisy like the whole campground was actually very quiet uh, I would absolutely stay here again and I would stay in this spot which is I think d5 day three more writing <laughs> I know you're surprised more writing I have broken out the colored pens now I have blue red purple black and I have a pencil and I am doing character lists and building plot today so I will keep you updated and it is gorgeous outside oh my gosh it's supposed to be like in the 60 or so today the sun is out I've seen robins I've seen some kind of a blackbird that I'm going to have to identify online I've seen little chickadees and little sparrows and it's the birds are out the the chainsaws out but it's in the distance so i'm not worried about that and um the the day is gorgeous so i'm going to try to resist going outside and messing around in the gorgeous sunshine and instead stay here and work on the book um we'll see how it goes i've already procrastinated once by cleaning out the entire bathroom it's not a large bathroom but i found a lot to scrub because i needed to procrastinate so i scrubbed a lot so uh we'll see how today goes i'll keep you posted so here we are on day four 
It's, it's been a laugh a second, hasn't it, folks? <laughs> okay, where am I at with writing? Well, I woke up this morning and I thought, I have done nothing and everything is bad. Because I always hit a point when I'm putting, making so many decisions to put so many things together to create a story. Because there's a lot that goes into it. Had to do a little research, so I was online doing some research too, and I had to keep stopping myself from falling down rabbit holes. You know, it's like, ooh, this is interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read about that for a while, and I'm like, nope, you are over here <clears throat> in the RV to get this figured out. So don't go down research rabbit holes until later. So I mostly resisted that. But how's it going? It is, it is going pretty well. I did walk yesterday down on the beach, and it was beautiful. It was 60 degrees, and I did resist going outside until, until the very end. Then I went out. Um, and I walked down the beach to where the day use park uh, spills onto the, where there's access from the day use park down to the beach. Walked back, lots of dogs out. So many people have their dogs over here, which is awesome, out on the beach. I was watching one dad chase after a, a little tiny kid with, uh, the dad had a little camera in his hands and he was chasing the kid running down the beach. So I came over on a Wednesday and when I came over, the park was pretty empty. Like what's strange is I, when I was looking for places to book, it said that all the spots were booked. Like you just couldn't find a place that was going to be all booked up. So when I came up here, I expected the park to be full. Like I expected, <laughs> here's my fear. I expected that I'm going to be trying to back into my slot and everybody in the park is going to be out watching me and being like, yeah, that woman doesn't know how to back up that rig, <laughs> which isn't true. I do know how to back her up. Whether I back her up straight or correctly is a whole nother matter, but I do know how to put the thing in reverse. So anyways, um, when I got up here, there weren't very many people at all in the, in the park. Like me and maybe eight other people or me and 10 other people. The slip next to me, I had a, a refurbished school bus, a schoolie, so it was, but it was a short schoolie, which I thought was cool. And that was like a mom and a dad and the two, two young boys. Uh, and then they left the next day. So they were only one night and then the next day in the slip next to me this older couple pull in and they have an r pod which is i don't know if you've ever seen one but it's a <clears throat> kind of a dewdrop shaped trailer uh, but it was a little r pod not the actual size of a dewdrop because there are dewdrop or te teardrop trailers it wasn't that size it was an r pod but like a small r pod and they get pulled in i'm like okay here's my new neighbors and they're getting it all set up and they're getting it leveled and they're getting all their stuff out and and all that and i'm like okay okay and then after they get that done, like they've got it all done, they pack it all back in, they unlevel it, they hook it back up to the, like they had unhooked their truck, they re-backed up their truck, hooked up their truck and took off and never came back. They didn't even stay the night. They didn't even stay for an hour. They just came. I, I have no idea what they were doing. I hope they didn't pay for the space. Like, I, and then they were gone. So I'm like, okay, well, that was that neighbor. And, but then last night was Friday, right? So Friday is when everybody got over to the park and, and I'm going to tell you a trick and you might already know this but when I look for camping spaces especially when I'm going on my own I will look at the campgrounds and they always have a little well not always but sometimes there's a little photo of what the uh, what the actual slot looks like then I go to Google Maps and I go to Google Earth and I zoom down to look at what the actual slot looks like from up above. And if anyone has taken any pictures of it and posted it on Google, I go look at that or drag the little you know person over and drop down and look at the site to see if it looks like something that I can manage. And so anyways, I had looked at this one. It looked like it had lots of space. But the thing about this one is that it is right at the beginning of the campground. So I am seeing Friday every vehicle come in sometimes go around several times as they're trying to find their spots i'm seeing um uh our pods of course i'm seeing relatively short trailers a couple of what are they called donkeys mules the little ones the burrows 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 little burrows i'm seeing uh a class c's which is what we have class a's i gotta say something about class a's they're the big bus size flat flat glass you know tour bus looking uh vehicles i i would never want to drive one but, you know, I, maybe it's not as difficult as it looks, but it just seems like a lot of vehicle to drive, right? So um, I, I'm watching the vehicles go by. I'm sitting at the table writing, and I've got my coffee, and I've got the window, you know, the screen up and the door open, and I'm just, you know, looking over as people are going in, which is, that's part of the fun of an RV park. Is I like to go around and, like, um, shop, window shop, you know, look at, ooh, that's nice, and oh, that's a good idea, and look at all the vehicles and all that, and people's, different people set up. So anyways, I'm watching this um, big engine. I can hear a big engine and it's it's a class A. And so I look out at the uh, class A because I'm always curious who's driving to. I know I'm nosy. I don't know if that's just because I'm nosy or I'm a writer. It's probably just because I'm nosy. But anyway, so I'm watching 
who's driving the, the Class A. And, um, driving this big Class A is a short-haired, short purple-haired woman, kind of like my doppelganger. It was like, it was like an almost me driving a, driving a Class A. And I'm like, oh no, has there been, has there been a glitch in the matrix? <laughs> And I thought, no, I, I would never drive for Class A. <laughs> but it was kind of funny. I'm like, ah, <laughs> my people, it's it's a it's an almost me driving that Class A. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> anyway, so um, today, today, okay, so today I'm going to be working on the thing that I think I have done nothing and it's terrible, the book. So this morning what I'm doing is I'm going back through and reading over all my notes, which will take a while, and then picking out the ones that I may have forgotten or put in the back of my head that I definitely want to bring to the foreground to put into the novels. I'm going to get that all arranged. And again, what I'm aiming for today is to get the plot line, the actual outline of book one done. And then what's going to, I don't know if this is good or bad, but interestingly, when I get back uh, to writing, when I get home, I'm going to go back to Wayward Devils. So I have to get this good enough that when after a couple of weeks I come back to it I'm going to remember all the things that I wrote we'll see how it goes and here we are we're on the last day this is the day I drive home I wanted to kind of sit here closer to the window so you could see my view out the window is lovely um, has been lovely for all these days um, I guess the big question is did I did I get my goal reached did I write everything I wanted to write well you know I always make massive goals and I am I, I'm I always make the big, big, big goal and then hope that I land somewhere near it. And I've got to say that my main goal was to get this one book outlined. And yes, yes, I did it. So I feel very good. It was absolutely time well spent. Um, I'm, I'm uh, ready to go home. I've only had a stuffed rat to talk to and we are out of interesting conversation. So it is time for me to head home. And I want to thank you so much for coming along with me to... Um, where am I? <laughs> Cape Lookout Campground on the Oregon coast. Um, I hope if you get a chance to come up here someday that you take a look at it. The day crown has been quiet and wonderful. And the, even though lots of people came in and it filled up, it's just been a delight. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by my Monday Monk and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.